Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's the special call, October 13, special call meeting. It's approximately 6, 12 p.m. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Burgess? Here. Councilwoman Waldman? Here. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Here. Councilman Williams? Here. Councilman Maldonado? Here. Vice Mayor Shelley? Here. Mayor Porter? Yes, here. Um, Order of business, uh, tab one, Mr. Manager. Mayor, our team automotive is requesting amendments to the contract for sale of real property for the bowling alley uh, as listed on exhibit one. On September 24th, 2015, the mayor and council deferred this item to a special call to be scheduled for October 13th, 2015. Any uh, questions from council at this time? I'll open up the public hearing. Anyone would like to speak in support or against, or anyone can come forward at this time? Can I get clarity, Mayor? This is a, what, what, is, what is this? We're, we're doing a uh, contract, and you're asking for public comment or for support or against the contract negotiations? Is that what, is that what you're asking? It just, uh, just in its public hearing, I'll just open up the public hearing. How does this constitute a public hearing? Madam Clerk? Is this a public hearing, Mr. Mr. Attorney? Usually we ask a public hearing is not required. It's up to the council as to whether they want to have a public hearing or not. Okay, but it's so not this required. is technically not a public hearing. Is that right, Richard? That's what I'm hearing. Unless the council decides to open it up. Okay. All right, got gotcha. you. Thank you. Okay. Just trying to get the logistic of got it. what your wording is. Yes, sir. Better. There is a uh, proposal on the table to amend the existing contract, which was executed in April of this year, to address technical corrections, call them just corrections, to the contract so as to put the timing of the dealership license into proper order. The buyer cannot get the dealership license until the building is completed and CO'd. And uh, if you're interested, I brought a copy of a couple of the pages of the document that the buyer will have to supply to the Department of Motor Vehicles to uh, as part of the process for getting that dealership license. But we've had many conversations with the Department of Motor Vehicles at this point, and they've made it perfectly clear, as they do in this application form, that the buyer cannot get this license unless and until they are in ownership or have a leasehold interest in the site in question. So w w by, by calling for the dealership license before the closing, we put the cart before the horse in this contract. And we are, with the city, looking simply to make the, uh, the change to put the dealership license requirement in its proper order, which is not at the beginning of the process, but rather at the end. I've had conversations today with Weiss Sirota, the city's council, and uh, we have uh, agreement on the changes that need to be made to the contract in order to move this forward. These are not changes that benefit either the buyer or the seller. They are simply changes that are neutral. Excuse me, excuse me just for a second. Our law firm is not taking a position pro or against this. What we did was, if the council determines to move ahead with the contract, we had a conversation today as to what changes need to be made, so we would be ready in the event that you decide to amend the contract. But we are not, and we are in agreement on what changes would need to be made if the council tells us to make the changes. But in terms of whether they should or not, that's up to the council. We are in agreement on the changes that need to be made. 
I don't know how else to say it. Let me ask a question to um, to the manager or the attorney. Unless this section is removed, both part, unless this is removed, both parties, either party could could pull out of this this potential agreement, correct? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Any questions from Council? Um, Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to thank my colleagues also because it was my uh, <clears throat> motion to move this to the night so that I could do some more due diligence on my behalf and, and, uh, and on the part of the citizens. And I know this gentleman wasn't, wasn't privy to any other meetings that I had had on this particular item. So it really, if uh, Mr. Rifkin isn't going to come to the podium, I really, it's hard for me to ask questions that I need to ask. Uh, Mr. Rifkin is here. Mr. Burgess, and uh, we also have available for you to talk to and ask questions of is, is the architect, David Zenner. That's fine. I've never met with him. I'm not questioning what he's drawn up and sent forward, but I am questioning some things that I've seen earlier in other meetings that are not being represented factually, I don't believe, to myself tonight. And those are the things that I haven't questioned. So, but if Mr. Rifkin wants to answer the questions that I have, then I'll be glad to continue my line of questions. Good evening, Councilman. Good morning, sir. Mayor, Good Mayor. evening, sir. Thank you. How are you today? Good, how are you? One of my comments, and maybe you can go back to, because when we were negotiating the price that night, we were a little bit, we were a little bit short, or you were a little bit short. We kind of had a number where we wanted to go that night up here. And one of your comments was that you needed $125,000 to vacate the land and, and knock down the building, which is not, uh, which is not case of what's going to take place now. Is that correct? Uh, actually, and I think we gave you a little bit of a leeway on the price because of the because we understood that that was to be done, um, that that building was going to be demolished. And in my eyes and in my mind that night, the the entire building was going to be demolished. It, was I mistaken that night, or was I mis misinterpreting what I understood? Um, there was a lot of things were said that night. Uh, I remember I was kind of put in a spot that night that I had to pay more money. I understand money. a lot of things were said that okay. night, but they're taken as facts. So, I understand. Um, as far as the demolition cost, is increased now to about $477,000 on what I expected to pay for at least what it was that night. 447. 447, I'm sorry. 447000 Because we'll be going to gut up the whole building and demol uh, demol uh, kind of tear down the front of the building, which is about a one-third of the building and doing complete inside is going to come out. So now it has an increase about $447,000, sir, okay. to answer your question. And I don't remember the day, but it was prior to April, so I would guess it would have to have been March when you and I met in my office. Yes, sir. Uh, privately, which I did disclose when, when asked. Um, you had a com I was showing a completely different rendering in my office than what I'm seeing today's as an architectural rendering. You showed me a building that had a large glass front that you said would be state-of-the-art. Hyundai had never built anything like this before. This was going to be their flagship uh, deal and that um, uh, we would want to do city events inside there. It was going to be so beautiful and so elegant looking. Uh, perhaps, and no, no uh, insults to the architect, but I, I don't believe that that's true of what I'm looking at today in today's renderings that are showing up with me today. Um, and I think the renderings that I was shown in my office in private with you are totally different than what you're showing to the city and to my colleagues today. Now, perhaps you showed them something different in their meetings, and I can't speak for them. But I know for a fact that the rendering that I've been given as your rendering is nothing like you, what you sold me on when you came to me. I brought the rendering with me, the no, one I brought to your office. I brought the whole folder. Uh, you, it, the one with the glass windows with the lights shining there, through yeah, it and the there, whole works? Yes. There, okay, because you told me the whole building was going to be glass on the front. Well, no, I showed you. I mean, this, this is what I showed you. Not only you, but all the council members individually. And I believe 
if I had to go back, because I've been in so many meetings in here, if you look at the video, <laughs> they were, everybody, I kind of, that night I had to say it up front that I, can, I should not show this right now because I, the market has not been declared as a disclosure with the Hyundai Motors, and I believe this was all, all, already been shown to all the council members one night, and the video should show that for the council meeting. But nevertheless, this was shown to every council member individually in their office, including your office. Now, reason I said this is a world class, because Hyundai has decided to change the colors from silver and blue outside remember that. into the bronze right. and brown. Uh, as, as a business owner, that's, I didn't agree with them, but I got to go with their decision because it's like a McDonald arch, change the yellow to the purple because everything is yellow. But at the end of the day, we were at that time, I believe number three or number four dealership in the country, it was going to have the world, the uh, uh, world design Hyundai Motor Design dealership, which is the same thing as in Germany, Asia, Europe, and that's what they're going to turn into. Now, perhaps the pictures that I brought versus the rendering, which is a whole lot bigger frontage, a whole lot bigger showroom, I can hold a lot bigger community event in there than what I showed you before because the, the whole building is going to be from we estimated somewhere around 22,000 square foot, now it's going to be over 40,000 square foot. So I brought the whole thing here with me so everybody can see. Wow. You brought the whole team. <laughs> well, I, I had to because I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to make a mistake what I, I say, am. how I say it, because this is not what I normally do every day, and I brought the whole professional team. And I'm going to need them anyhow at the end of the day as going forward, because um, we have a, a land attorney, everybody knows Hugo, and... I, I, I guess one of my other questions is, since it seems maybe the size... Would you, li would you like to see this, Councilman? That's all right. Okay. I'll, I'll get it in a minute. If okay. I the size of the dealership, is it the square footage yes, of the building is going to be the same since you're now you're not going to build an entire building and that? Because of my, my question is, is the number of jobs still going to be consistent with what you represented uh, when you were here prior? Yes, sir. Um, I brought a uh, regional presentation that we're looking to employ about 50 people up front when we open up, we're going to go up to about 70 to 80 people. What I predict, reason we want to expand the shop, expand the building, have a bigger building, is because we feel the units and operations are going to be a lot more than we thought in the next five years. So rather than coming back to the city, hey, we've got to tear this thing down, going through the permit process. The show that we're going to use were the largely mainly for the mechanical shop and parts department and the service their vehicles. So. If everything goes where it is, uh, economy stays where it is and everything, and I'm throwing all my money on the table, yes, I, I, I believe we're going to need a lot more space and a lot more job in there, a lot more employee, employee to uh, perform. Okay. Mayor, I'll, I'll hold some other questions back to give right, sure. my... Uh, all right. Did you, want, did you want to see the pictures, by the way? Everybody I can see. The I, got original ones? I got my glasses on tonight. I can see it. <laughs> I want to see that one. Well, I think, which is the one you showed on the, this one. This is what yeah. you showed them in their meeting. Yeah. Mr. Williams. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, uh, and car number six, 1621, exhibit number three, which is the minutes. Uh, it states that staff recommended that the purchase price, not us, but staff recommended that the purchase price be 2.31. Nine four eight two million dollars. So we did not, according to the minutes on page six, um, the staff recommended the purchase price would be two point three. So we went with what the staff had recommended the purchase price was. If I'm correct, Carlos, what during that time uh, and with the interest and all of that, what was so that the city will be whole again, what was that? Do you remember what that if, price was? If, uh, I mean, if I recall correctly, the offer was like 2.1 million. Staff was asked what the amount of the receivable for the payoff would be to make us whole, and the amount of the sales price is that amount, the 2.3 million. So that was no wiggle room as far as docs. It, it was what the, what the uh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm hearing right from my colleagues. Staff, staff was asked what, was the, what would the payoff be 
to make that the payoff whole, and that was the amount that we provided. Okay, so that was a little discounted amount. That was what the purchase price was according to staff, right? The amount of the payoff right, with interest, the amount the same of same the original thing. loan plus the interest was the amount that staff provided to the council, and council determined that that would be the sales price. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, Ms. Faircloth? Yes, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councilman Williams, for clarifying that. I just wanted to amplify that because I supported this because you offered a respectable amount for this property, unlike some of the offers that we've previously been offered for this property, and I was very relentless in my pursuit to ensure that we receive fair market value for this. So I don't want that to get lost into the whole scheme of things. This is why I support it because it's fair market value and it's not disrespectful to the taxpayers by proffering a price that is just going to basically give this land away. So we did not give any concessions as far as pricing. Want to clarify that. Ms. Wallman, are you still on the phone? I'm sorry, Mayor. Yes. I, I, did, I, I didn't know if I you wanted to say anything. I was just trying to help. Uh, I'm having a little hard a hard time talking because I had dental surgery yesterday. Um, no, I just, I, I, I'm just, I'm just listening to what's being said. You know, I, I had questions um, about the email that I received late Friday afternoon. How it changed from 2,400 to a different number. Um, I had a conversation today with, uh, with some staff. Um, so I, I, I think I'll just wait and hear what my colleagues have to say. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Maldonado. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a question in regards to the number of jobs. I think, you know, one of the items when, we, when I considered this um, was, you know, the ability to, to provide jobs for the city. Uh, for its residents, it's one of our one of my main concerns, and I'll expand on that in a little bit. Um, can you give me again, again, maybe roughly or an estimate of the number of jobs that we're going yes, to sir. have, and maybe give some of the titles of the jobs that we're going to have? Um, and uh, yes, sir. Please. I um, this again. This was my original presentation individually and collectively. I came here, and. Um, we're going to be adding approximately 50 jobs at the beginning, which will be consist of about 20 people who will be in the service and parts area, then administrator people in the county, about 10, and then we'll have the rest of the 20 people for the sales, finance department, business department, business development center, sales manager, finance manager, and the uh, used car manager. Um, the wage is going to be up to about $150,000 a year on some of those employees. Um, and we're going to have a, uh, a, a training course from the, uh, is created by the manufacturer for Hyundai Motor to get certified. So even though they don't have experience on the automotive business, that we have, we have a capability through the Hyundai Motors to what we call a certified through the manufacturer to train them so it will be a job on training so no experience will be necessary to come into work in our dealership which I've done that with my, my, my other dealerships by the way. Okay, thank you very much. Just wanted to get a kind of idea of the numbers that we have. So we started, we're saying you're going to start off around 50. Around 50. And you, what do you see? Uh, how many employees yeah, do you see this going to, maybe? Yeah, based on planning potential, I'll predict in the next five years, possibly seven, about 100, 100 to about 120 employees. Okay. And currently, right now, my, my other dealership, which is um, Chrysler Jeep Dodge dealership, we employ right now about anywhere from 90 to about 105 employees. And we're doing the volume that I will figure we're going to be doing the next five years in Hyundai store. Thank you. Vice Mayor, you want? Uh, let me just, um, Ms. Ms. Faircloth, did you hit? Did you want to say something, Vice Mayor? 
not yeah. necessarily. I have, I have comments, so. Okay. Well, let me to... let me say just for for my own. You know, I've I've been against the project since day one. No disrespect to to you. You know, I, I think that um, you know, the council's done a, a lot to uh, meet more than more than halfway on the project with you know the HUD disclosure and demonification, the uh, prohibition against transfer, and also the the timeline on the con on the finishing of the construction. This is this is definitely a, a moving target that we're trying to trying to chase down here. So, um, and I think I think that we this was the only this is the only place left in my mind for me as a council person to say no to this project. And and again, I'm just going to say it again. My my feeling personally is no to this project, and I'll stay consistent with that. And and I think that the city's done a lot to to meet halfway or more than halfway, but. Um, I, I can't support your request to take this out of the contract at this time. But if you win, best of luck. Uh, Vice, Ms. Ms. Fairclaw, and then yes, Vice thank Mayor. You, Mayor. Let me just say this because I, f I feel like I have to. There's been a lot of talk in the community about the sale and the disposition of this property. A lot of tempers are flaring. But let me just say two things simply. One, I don't think any of us in this building or on this dais would agree on how we're going to move forward with this property. But what I can say is that where all of us agree is the fact that we want to bring more family entertainment establishments in this community. We all want that. The community wants that. But as elected officials, we have to be fiscally responsible and good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. This is why I am supporting this item not because I don't want bowling. I would love bowling. I would love more family entertainment establishments. And if this passes tonight, we're not going to take our eyes off that. I know I'm not. I'm going to continue to pursue family entertainment establishments in this community, particularly in the downtown community, where we're working very, very hard to create the heart and the hub down there of our entertainment and culture. So I don't want the community to feel that we are against bowling, we are against family entertainment activities. I can't speak for all of you, I can speak for myself and say that I will continue to work to bring those type of establishments to this community if this proposal passed tonight. I just wanted to put that on the record. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Vice Mayor. Mayor. Let me get the Vice Mayor, then Mr. Mal Maldonado, and then I'll get you, okay? Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. No, I, I was just going to, I guess, set the context because my understanding from a historical standpoint is our last meeting, we kind of batted all this around. We'd kind of gotten from point A to point B. And the question was whether or not to amend the contract by a certain date and time. My understanding is that date and time has now come. And so, therefore, the contract at this point, either party could then choose to terminate it because the terms were, they didn't meet their, their original requirement. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, and so what I understood is that we were going to have this meeting for purposes of there was some discussion about whether or not the building proposed was what the building was, what did uh, my colleagues have concerns about the site plan, the type of building, um, you know, that, those types of renderings. Uh, and then, so the question that I had was you know, I wanted to see what it was, but I also say that the emails that you guys provided, similar to my colleague here, is the proposal, the original proposal that you're saying we saw is, is nothing like I remember being. The, the proposal that I remember seeing was more of a all glass cube, two story style building where you had different levels. So it was your first glass up and then it was kind of another smaller cube on top of the original cube. And it was very unique. It was a very unique styling. It was, um, you know, it, I have to say as far as the car dealership go, it, it was neat looking. But that's not what you proposed now. It's a different, completely different design now as well as what you're saying your original proposal was to us is still yeah. Completely different than what I ever remember seeing. I've never seen your original proposal that you're saying that you provided us. So that's where my confusion is when we start talking about what the building is supposed to be, what it is now, and what it was originally planned to be, are completely two different things. Vice Mayor, I, I, I think I got it now when you just said, looks like a two story, another small one on the top. That, that is their current uh, building it was required for all Hyundai USA dealers around the world. And it's exactly what you describe. It is a one floor, and they stack up the blue one, dark blue uh, building on the top. So it looks like a two-story. But And that was my, to be honest with you, that was my kind of disagreement with Hyundai. I said, look, why would I want to put a bronze building when every dealership in USA 
is wood blue, I mean the silver outside and the blue on the top. And their answer simply to me is that we're changing our identity, we're changing our global ability. Right, which is fine, but my, my question is though is that that what you said you gave us as the original proposal, which I recall being something more like you're just describing now, which maybe that's a Hyundai, Correct. Hyundai standard building. Right. I remember it being all glass, though, not solid buildings as far as... Oh, no, it's, it's glass. It's yeah, all it glass, top and bottom. But then right. when specifically asked whether or not that's what you proposed to us, we got something back saying, no, you never proposed that, that what you had given us and what you originally proposed was a smaller version of what you have right there, Correct. which I can tell you I have never seen. You've okay. never provided that okay. to me. So that's where my confusion is, is that okay. what you're telling what you said you gave us, and then now what you're saying you actually probably maybe did give us are completely different no, things. I did not give, so, no, I didn't say this, sir. I said this is what everybody, public, all people who look at a Hyundai building today, it's just like exactly what you described. When you drive by any Hyundai store, you will see it's, it's gray, silver, then it goes up to the dark blue, and it's silver and blue at the end of the day. I have never shown any silver and blue because I couldn't. Okay. I, all I know is I remember what I, what I had seen, and it was more of like that description, nothing like what okay. you're saying you proposed to us originally. But putting all that aside, and the only reason I asked that is because I know my colleagues asked a similar question, and I don't feel that it got answered, and I, I was still confused myself. Um, but I, I know what was being proposed I don't necessarily think is the most aesthetically pleasing um, building. And again, I know we had this discussion. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the use. I'm not a big fan necessarily of the, of the project. However, if the project's going to go forward, which the majority of my colleagues had already made that decision, I want to make sure that whatever product is there is, is the best product for that particular site. And I, and I don't know that what you have proposed stands out. It doesn't say this is a new, you know, unique location in Homestead. This isn't a new dealership or a, a um, sets it apart from any other dealership I've ever seen. And so that's the really concern that I have with the building that you're proposing now is it's, it's kind of a, a blah building. Um, which, which again, if it's going to be a car dealership there, at least make it something that is, you know, unique, something that everyone's going to look at and say, wow, that's, that's a pretty neat product. Mr. Vice Mayor, if I'm, Mr. Mayor, may I also Please. just interject one? To Hugo Arza, law office is at 701 Brickell Avenue, and, and Mr. Vice Mayor, you, you brought the conversation over to the building and the approvals, and, and so I, obviously you all know me, and, and I'm, I'm working with RT Automotive on their zoning and, and land use approvals. I would make two comments to what you just said. One is, again, and I think um, Mr. Rivchin mentioned it, um, our, the architect has flown in from, from Atlanta. He's here, he's sitting right there, and I know he'd be more than happy to answer any specific questions. I think you prefaced your comments by saying you thought that tonight would be a little bit about the discussion, the building, and all of that. So, uh, you know, he's come all the way from Atlanta. I would encourage all of you, if you have any questions about the building, about what's being kept, what's going, why it's at an angle, whatever it is, he's given me a, a very good explanation. I think he'll do a great job of explaining what, how this building is, is incorporating green elements, trying to preserve some of the existing building as, as, a, as, a, as, as a green feature. How you actually get points for preserving parts of buildings and that him as an architect, he designs buildings that way. I think he'll give an explanation. To the second part of your question, I, I would tell you that um, it's an aesthetic point that you're making regarding the building. Um, usually I stand up here before you guys at the first of two in the case of this uh, application uh, rezoning. There'll be a rezoning as part of this, so, so you'll hear me twice if we move forward from tonight, and I hope we do. Um, there will be ample opportunities. We still don't have staff comments from, from the Development Services Department on anything we've submitted. We, we don't have them yet. We're going to DRC next month. So as far as questions about the design, Trust me, I can tell my clients and I can look at them. You guys have always, until the last hearing, not been shy about telling one of my clients, listen, I'm just not comfortable with this aspect or this aspect. I would tell you that that part of the process hasn't even started yet. I mean, if we're, if we're fortunate, we'll, we'll be before you in, in a couple of months for that part of the process. And I would encourage you, and I know you've always kept an open mind, to, to look at that opportunity that you will have. I don't think it's the last opportunity that you have to look at this building. I think it's the first time you see this building. And if you have any comments, I mean, I, I know that the, both, you know, Mr. Rivchin and I'm sure Mr. Zenner, the architect, would be happy to hear. And if it's something that we can incorporate. Right, and I, and I, I understand that. The only reason I, I disagree with you in that respect is that the last meeting we had this discussion, and that was in our contract that we have, nothing really talks specifically about what the building should look like. Uh, sure. For whatever reason, it was never placed in there. And so at this pay stage, we have an ability as a council to get a product that we want. So maybe some of us don't agree with the use. But at least if, it, if a product's going to be built, it should be the best looking product that we can and, get. And there's no disagreement. And so what the attorneys had informed us last meeting was that 
during the site plan process and during the approval, you can't just say no strictly because we don't like the way the building looks. If it meets all the basic code requirements, yes, we can, we can put pressure on, but at the end of the day, there's nothing that we can do to guarantee that we get the building we want. Now is the time to guarantee that we get the building we want, yeah. and aesthetically it looks and accomplishes the goal that we have. So that's why my discussion is focused on that. Now ultimately, you know, the discussions to be had with my colleagues and, and the majority will rule here, but that's why I make my comments tonight, because if, if it's a special building that we're looking to have, an iconic building for a car dealership, which is what was promised, that's one reason why this discussion is taking place, because at the original meeting, that was kind of what was sold to us, that this was going to be an iconic car dealership. And, and what I'm seeing is not necessarily iconic to me. And again, it's all about taste, and my colleagues may have a different opinion. So that, that's all the comments I have for now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Maldonado and Ms. Wallman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, question to staff, to the manager. Are we losing any ground by meeting with these concessions that they're asking? Are we losing, what are we losing here? Are we putting ourselves in jeopardy that would be in, in, in a disfavor to our community? Or besides, you know, we've met our financial needs from what we're asking, but besides that, which we've met that requirement where we're not going to undersell this property that we have appraised, is there anything else that we are losing here, or have the potential to lose? And I, you know, I know that this building has always been, we want to make sure that uh, that is, it's going to be in this, the best use for, for the city or, uh, but I think the main thing was always about the money. But besides that, are we losing anything? Councilman, the proposed changes requested by the buyer have to do with the timing of the dealership license. The original contract required them to obtain that prior to closing. If you agree with the requirements or the suggestions of buyer and their council, that dealership license would not be obtained prior to the closing. That's the significant change. Okay. But in essence, they're still going to continue to you know, from what we're seeing here, and I, I'm assuming the money they're spending, they're going to build the dealership. Um, they're saying that basically they have to have uh, the contract in hand and build, build the dealership before they get a license. So how does this, no, how does this work normally? Well, according to the DMV and the state regulations, the license is obtained once they have site ownership. In this case, they would be purchasing the property. The facility is built and then inspected by the DMV. So the significant change to the contract is that the license for the dealership would come post-closing once they purchase the property. So that, Councilman, is, is the basic issue of why the language was the way it was in the contract, was what the, what the safeguards were in the contract were to prevent them from owning the property until they kind of complied with the intent of what they were doing. And so that was the dilemma here in terms of stripping that language out means that they own the property before we know whether they can get the license or not. So could we, is there any other language that we put in there that would guarantee that we get this building in place so they, they would get the license? I mean, is there anything that we could do in regards to, I mean, the issue is that we don't lose, we don't want them to build anything else. So what are the guarantee, we put the, the requirement of the license in place in order to get the guarantee. Obviously, it's not going to work for them. It's not working for us. What can we do in order to make that, uh, to still um, protect us from that? Well, at Council's direction, the contract could be amended to require that the dealership license be obtained after closing within a certain a period of time. Um, however, if it's not obtained for whatever reason, the state doesn't issue the license, then the buyer already owns the property. I guess you could add provisions in the contract, there would be some kind of remedy after closing where the city would basically have to sue to enforce that dealership license in the event they didn't obtain it. Uh, so really the, the leverage is lost once the closing takes place. You would have to then go after the buyer to make sure that they obtain that license. And also, you know, if the state doesn't issue it, that's beyond the city's control, right. as well as the buyer. I mean, we had a we had a car dealership here that that didn't have a license in the past. Um, I think it was uh, which one was it, Richard? Can you help me out? The, was it the um, Chrysler dealership or the Jeep, Dodge? They, they had a license here for many years. Big supporter of the city, ended up losing it. We actually helped them to get it back, and uh, but they were able to operate place didn't look like, actually they look like they even did remodeling during that time 
in order to get the license back. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that <laughs> can only assume that with all these everything that's happening here, we're gonna we're going to have uh, a car dealership now. Having said that, you know, my, my, my question, you know, to this council and to this community is are we going to lose our opportunity um, to, to have a, a car dealership that's going to provide potentially 110 jobs uh, in regards to just a design idea, uh, which we can easily disagree about, you know, whether this building, that one looks fine, a building that is of quality um, that's providing jobs, which is more of the need, would be more of my interest as opposed to whether it's pink or blue, whether it has rainbows or not. Um, you know, I just, you know, it, this is, you know, so many years this thing has sat here, it's done nothing. It's cost us money. You know, here we are today, you know, that $2.3 million can be, we can have it in hand, which could be in use for what we need to do moving forward with the downtown area. And we're providing jobs. I was reading the Herald today, and I'm just going to have to, I'm going to go on a rant here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I usually don't, but. <laughs> rant. Go ahead on a rant. <laughs> you know, I was reading the, the, the paper today, and uh, one of the biggest issues that we had to, you know, that was on here on the front page uh, was the economy. It's still the number one issue in the state of Florida, the economy. Um, I'll just read it real quick, job incentives. When it comes to economic development, the result also showed that little agreement throughout the state about the best approach to economic development. Um, despite the, uh, um, our governors uh, travel across the nation to bring outside jobs to Florida, the survey found that the first time since 2008, more Floridians, 45%, would prefer the governor to focus on maintaining existing businesses and jobs while 43% say that the state should focus on attracting new business and jobs to the state. The reason why so many people regard government was wasteful at the moment is tied to the fact that many people feel the stress of the household finances. It's been a long pattern in government finance if the people are having to make tough choices and the discussion of taxes, da 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 da, da. But the point in, in, in this case is that, and I, and I wrote a rant, I had a, on, even on Facebook where you know, it, it boils, in my decision, it boils down to wants and needs. You know, when I campaigned back in 2007, 2009, and, two, and 2013, I recall the citizens of Homestead saying, please bring more jobs to Homestead. Work on the economy. That was a top issue. It was not about entertainment. It wasn't about bowling. It was about, I need to feed my family. I need to put clothes on my kids' back and I need jobs. Can you please do that? There were veterans that were here that were unable to work, and it broke my heart when I walked and knew that in this community so many people were suffering because we did not have jobs here. You know, we spoke about in our visioning, visioning session back when uh, our city manager came on board was to bring jobs. That is what I'm looking at here today. My brother works for BMW South Competition, but nonetheless, he makes good money. He's a service advisor. He's been there for more than 15 years. Um, and I know most of the staff because I go there to take my car. And, you know, the car industry works. Jo those jobs are good jobs. They're accounting jobs. They're sales jobs. They're, they're, um, those are jobs that we need here. And that's really my issue. You know, I, 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 it's hard for me to understand that I think we're going to walk away or, or, or try to turn down this decision over a design idea, whether you think it's better or not, or it's a blob, you know, what I'm worrying, about, what I'm seeing is that that is going to drive traffic in Homestead. Those folks were going to have jobs in the neighborhood. Those folks that work there are going to eat in our neighborhoods. They're going to eat in the restaurants. They're going to spend money here. Uh, we're going to have traffic in an area that's dead. My office is down the street. You know, I could tell you that's kind of a dead zone. Um, it's always been a dead zone. When the bowling alley was there, it was still a dead zone. So, um, you know, I, I, that's my rant, where in a sense that I can't understand that, in my eyes, we're arguing about a design idea or flaw or mistake of what someone said as opposed to jobs that are going to impact this community. So many, I, the other day, I met a woman that was at, a, at an event and she works in the Gables and she says, I'm leaving Homestead because it takes me two hours to go to my job in the Gables. 
I can't do it anymore. I've lived here for a year. I love Homestead. It's great, but the driver's killing me. Um, but, you know, wouldn't it be great if we said, look, there's going to be a, a, 50 to 110 jobs that are going to be here. To me, it's a no-brainer. Um, you know, I'm going to be in favor for this project simply because there are families out there that are hurting and they need jobs. Um, and, and that's what I signed up for when I walked and I campaigned for this community. I am not going to sit here and argue about the building now has one less glass or, or the, the design changed a little bit. I'm sorry, can't do it. Not for this community that I walked for, that I support. We need jobs in this community. Even if you wanted a bowling alley, in my opinion, it's still not the right idea there. Shoot, I, like I said in my rant, we, and, and I typed it on Facebook, we could sell this, put some of the money to go towards building our own bowling alley in the downtown area where it should be. Not over there where it was. That was old Homestead. This is new Homestead. I think, and I hope this council would, 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 would consider, you know, the residents that we represent. Um, it's, for me, it's a basic, it's, it, there's wants and needs. We need jobs. Bottom line. Thank you. That's it. Ms. Wallman. Yes, Mayor. <laughs> Well, Mr. Maldonado, I, I regretfully have to go after your rant. So I, I hope that uh, people Judy, will Judy, indulge my Judy, questions. Judy, Judy, speak into your, into your phone better. We can't hear you, okay? I, can you hear me now? That's better. That, that's as good as I can get. Um, I was just saying that it's hard to go after, as Mr. Maldonado called it, his rant, because I still had questions from before. Um, can you hear me, Mayor? Speak up, please, if you can. Okay, I'm doing the best I can. I had dental surgery yesterday, so um, it must be if, if they could turn the volume up. Um, I know Felix can do that. Um, my my question. I have a couple of questions. Um, how long has the Hyundai dealership been in existence there on Old Dixie Highway? About one, I think it's about 158th Street. Do you know, Mr. Rishkin? How long has the Hyundai dealership been in existence on 158th Street? Talk I think it's 158 in Old Dixie. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, US 1. Yeah, well, 158th Street, she's right. Um, good evening, um, Ms. Waldman, Council Waldman. They've good been evening. there for about four years. Um, yeah, four years, about. And um, yeah, four years. I just want to say okay. anything anymore. <laughs> the, re the only reason I'm asking, Jay, is because when, when I met with you, you know, I too was shown a design that was so architecturally um, modern and, and I just thought, you know, this is so different from what we're being shown now. <coughs> Excuse me. And yesterday when I was at my dentist, lo and behold, my dentist is right there on the corner of 158 and US 1, and I looked at the building, and it's exactly the same building as you are proposing now, but weren't proposing in the beginning. So I, I just, I'm just confused with that, very confused as to if that was been in existence for three or yeah, four years. You came before us in April and met with us in March. Didn't you know that? Okay, I was having a little hard time hearing you, but did you say that one on 158th Street <clears throat> is what I, about what I showed you, what it looks like what I showed you? No, no, no. I said that that's what, that's, that's a very similar structure as to what you're presenting now. In other words, a, a box-like structure. No, no. One on 158th Street is nothing like this, ma'am. Uh, there's silver okay. outside. There's a blue top. Uh, they basically um, no, they're not. They're not. They're the old design. This is a new. They may be a different color, but it's the same box structure. No, 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 ma'am. No. The uh, maybe if I can. Well, they. Uh, my architect is. He just finished one. He's finishing one up in Atlanta. New uh, Hyundai Global Design Hyundai uh, dealerships. So Dave, you want to? Uh, well, uh, can I just finish, Mayor? Because I'm not there to see any pictures or anything like that. It's it it, it, it I took a picture of it. I have it on my phone. 
it, it to me it looked like it was a one story box structure that was very deep um, and my point is is that the structure the the, the the drawings the renderings that you showed to me were very different than what you show me now and we have, we can talk about jobs all day long and that will be an issue forever and ever and ever however I do believe that our city has done a good job in bringing jobs to Homestead and will continue to do that. I don't, I don't know that I, I, it's an important factor here, but I go back to my conversation that we had last time, what was that, three weeks ago, when, I mean, I sat there and I did the math and I was told 2,400 square feet would be demolished instead of the whole building, and that's what you promised us in the beginning was that you were going to demolish the building, <coughs> excuse me, and then you verified that it was going to be 16,600 feet that was going to be demolished, and then when we found out that it was 2,400, uh, excuse me, let me digress, you said it was going to be a third of the building, 1,600 um, 16, square feet, and then a few days later we find out that it was 2,400 square feet. That came as a shock to me. And then later on now Friday we get an email and I understand that it's changed once again. So I'm just, I'm just not feeling as comfortable as I should feel. Also you said, let me ask you a question. You said something about training are you, and that you're certified to train. Are you going to have a school there? Or, or to train all these employees, or will you only be training your employees, or how does that work? Okay, um, I'm going to let, if you don't mind, uh, Councilman Waterman, Councilwoman, I'm going to have my architect answer some of this question because I know he's done both of these buildings around the country. Do you mind if I do that, uh, Mayor or Dave Zimmer? But answer the question too about the school oh, the, in the process. In the there, process, yeah, there is no a training school in the dealership. Uh, there is a job on training program, which is okay. done through the manufacturer of any manufacturer, whether it's a Chrysler, Hyundai, or Toyota, any manufacturer. The, the technicians, salespeople, uh, managers, they have to be certified through the manufacturer uh, requirement. So the only thing I was trying to say about training is to have anybody who don't have an experience, but they want to make their 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 a year, we're there to help them not only train in, in, in job on training, but by certifying them through the manufacturer, give them a higher level of education. So they, they are, um, so when you get served by one of our team members when you come to the dealership, they are professionals rather than um, they don't know what they're talking about on product line or repairing it. I, I see. Okay. I thought, so uh, I will, sorry, I will turn over to Mrs. Zenner for some of the questions well, that you had if, if, real quickly because he's done both buildings around the country. Right now he's matter of fact, finishing on both styles. So, so go ahead, uh, Dave. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is David Zenner. Um, I'm a Florida registered architect and uh, the architect for this dealership. In addition to that, I am a lead accredited. Uh, Sir, can you could you speak up? We're having a hard time hearing you. Just the top of the microphone. You just, just very top. You can twist it up. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Better. Yeah. Yes. My name is Dave Zenner. I am um, the architect for the dealership. I'm a uh, practicing architect in Florida since 1980. Three and um, an automobile dealership specialist. Um, in addition, um, I'm a lead accredited architect and an environmentalist. Is on top of that. Um, uh, I also am responsible for advising the owners on the best use of this property, how to accommodate um, either a new building or um, make use of the existing superstructure to the very best of their ability. Um, I have a particular interest in maintaining uh, the existing building because of um, my interest in environmental uh, issues. Uh, but I also was the designer of the original rendering that uh, has been referred to this evening, as well as the revised rendering, which was based on the reuse of the bowling alley. 
Um, I, I have to confess that when the owners first came to me and asked me if they could reuse the bowling alley, I indicated that it was highly unlikely. Um, I subsequently had extensive discussions with the building department, specifically uh, Linda Boanco, about the possibility of reusing the bowling alley because that was clearly to the advantage of the community as well as to the owners. Uh, specifically, it allowed the owners to build a much larger facility which, which facilitated future expansion, uh, giving them the easier opportunity uh, to expand the jobs uh, in the community when they needed to. Um, Ms. Boanco indicated that the uh, existing building code, existing building, the codes that pertain to existing building buildings allow us to reuse the superstructure if we demolish less than 30 percent of the existing building. So we worked very hard to not demolish more than 30 percent of the existing building. With regard to the, um, to the comments about the, uh, contra the, the, the negotiations about the cost of demolition, as you might imagine, partial demolition, which is what, sh what is envisioned right now, is considerably more expensive than complete demolition of the building. Uh, complete dem demolition just involves bringing a bulldozer in and knocking the whole thing down and tearing it away. Uh, this will involve uh, selective demolition of the interior and the exterior, which has to le carefully leave uh, the existing superstructure in place. Uh, the, uh, the building that the building that excuse me, the building that was originally uh, shown uh, to the councilman or the mayor when uh, the negotiations were taking place again was drawn by my office. It was based on the generic uh, Hyundai uh, global design a global dealership space identity initiative, uh, which is a worldwide Hyundai initiative, uh, uh, which is to say all Hyundai dealerships worldwide are mandated now to have this new, this new look. I believe that the, I, I believe strongly that the questions, the questions that have been raised about the appearance of the building are based on some misconceptions. The building is as high and has as much glass as it did initially. It was never a two-story building. I can attest this because <laughs> I designed it. Uh, and the, so the height perception is based on the proportions of the building. Uh, the building is twice as, twice as big as uh, it was originally designed. And the reason for that is because we're working with the, the, the basic bowling alley, uh, which is a 30, which is a 40,000 square foot uh, building. So in order to keep this shell, we had to change the proportions of the front of the building, but the, the height of the, of the glass facade and the width of the glass facade is the same as it was in the rendering that was shown uh, when Jay originally discussed the project. Again, the reason that he went, in my opinion, from uh, showing a new building to showing a new front on the dealership superstructure was simply that I advised him I didn't think it was likely that the building official would allow us to reuse the superstructure. I was wrong. Uh, careful examination of the code and discussion revealed that we can do that with proper engineering um, certification of the building, which is what is underway at this time. Okay, Ms. Ms. Waldman, you still have the floor. Any other questions? No, Mayor. Ms. Fairclaw? I got you next and then Mr. Williams. Yes, I'll, I'll defer. I believe Mr. Williams. Williams wanted to take my spot. Thank you. And this is maybe to staff, but um, what's, your, well, I'm sorry, what's your name again, sir? My name is David Center. David? Yes. Can I call you David? Certainly. Mr. David? Um, you, you, I have two things. Yes. One is dealing with you. You, you said something that was uh, piqued my interest. You said that you had environmental concerns about the building if it was fully demolished. What were your environmental concerns? I believe what I was referring to is that if it's not fully demolished, we make a significant contribution to the environment. Um, if I, if you, if you, if you would, would allow me, just Mr. David, Mr. David, don't. Yeah. Th I got to eat my mic tonight because I don't, I can't hardly hear. Yeah. The, when you said more friendly to the environment, what do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean is that 
tearing down the, all of the steel, concrete, um, and paving and curbs from the bowling alley to build a new facility is wasteful and, in, and, uh, has, and harmful to the environment relative to preserving existing building stock. Um, the, the lead credit that's quoted is the, to the extent the life cycle of existing building stock, um, uh, excuse me, um, to extend the life cycle of existing building stock, conserve resources, reduce waste, and reduce environmental impacts of new buildings as they relate to materials, manufacturing, and transport. Um, and the requirements for that particular lead credit, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting from LEED because they are the environmental uh, resource. Um, the requirements for that particular credit would be to maintain the existing building structure, including the structural floor, floor and roof decking and envelope, the exterior skin and framing, excluding wind, window assemblies and non-structural roofing materials, the building uh, minimum percentage building reuse for each point threshold um, is either 55%, 75%, or 95%. In this case, we're retaining approximately 75% of the existing exterior building envelope, and that's what I meant by it's more environmentally responsible. Okay, so by trying to conserve the building, we are, we are really uh, protecting the environment or, 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 or uh, not causing any more um, already to environmental concerns. Uh, yeah. Is that, is, is that what I understand you just said? Exactly. Concrete in particular is one of the most environmentally damaging materials there is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, this is for staff. Now, I heard uh, we got in our emails a couple of days after that we had the last meeting, and this is for the staff or manager. When uh, you sent us that diagram of the new building uh, of of the diagram of the of the building and uh, it, and it was marked in red. Was that from the applicant or was that from the city? Did the city indicate that it estimate that it was going to be 2,400 square feet? And did the city, did our staff mark that in red, or was that from the applicant? Who who did that? Who 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 carved out that to say it was only going to be 2,400 square feet? And then what is the number now? that I, I heard um, uh, the, my pretend, uh, the colleague on the phone say that it's changed. Who gave us that 2,400 square feet or did, or did the applicant do that? How did that come about? Sure. Because I saw it on Facebook. So I know you only sent it to seven of us and two other people. So I don't know how I get leaked on Facebook. Somebody up here did that. But anyway, go ahead. Would you explain that? Sure. The chronology of events was after the meeting there was questions about how much of the building is being demolished and also at the time of the meeting I wasn't aware and most of us weren't aware that they had submitted plans to the planning department. So when we set up on the dais they disclosed that they had right, submitted right. the plans. I hadn't seen them nor most of us. So nor was I ever told that they had submitted. Right. That being said, what I asked staff to do, both uh, planning staff and Julio, to pull what they had mm -hmm. and, and figure out, based on those plans that they submitted, how much was being demolished. So that first drawing that we sent you, where there's an X only at the corner, that's Julio and planning department after analyzing their plans. We sent that to you all, and then a few days later, or maybe a week later, they sent you all an email saying our information was er erroneous, although we never sent them what we sent you, but somehow they had it. Mm -hmm. And so they said we have what's er erroneous and that they're demolishing much more. So there was back and forth phone calls and discussions with them about we know what we have here and now we know you just sent something to the council and said our information is wrong. And so after the meetings and then after they looked at it, they came back and said, oh, we made a mistake in our submission and what, what you have is not what we really meant to have. And so then they went ahead and they resubmitted. So that's where the change comes. So how much is the change? What is the amount the of square foot? Yes, yeah, sir. They are, they are um, going to be ret um, remodeling the remaining part of the building, about 40,000 square feet, 39 
15,900 uh, square feet will remain out mm -hmm. of what they claim is a 51,420 51, square foot building. So what's the difference? That's my question. The difference between um, between the difference between how much are they demolishing? They're they're demolishing um, 11,520 square feet. So not 2,400. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay, thank okay, you. And that's where the confusion was, is they submitted something and it was erroneous. So our analysis to you all was based on what they submitted. And then they looked at it and then they, they agreed that what they had was not what they wanted to do. And so they resubmitted something else. And now uh, that's where we're well, at. I, I mean, I, if I may just, I mean, I would just clarify, it, we, it was mislabeled. We didn't change. I mean, I mean, there was always 11,000 well, feet being demolished. So I, I don't want anyone to think we... Well, no, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to. You can call what, what you want to call it, but the plans that you submitted called for that corner of the piece of the property, uh, and that was it. it. So, so uh, of course, I've been involved. I'm not in, saying it was intentional. I'm no, just saying no, that let me, let me just explain what the happened. analysis that the staff right, right, gave right. was correct, and, and you, your own P, the development crew said that you made a mistake. So that's okay. Nobody's complaining about it, but that's where it came from. Yeah, what happened was was the civil engineer looked at this plan right here and because this new showroom the new all glass showroom overlapped the portion of the building that we were taking down he misinterpreted it as part of the building that would remain rather than being the all new glass showroom and so he simply didn't show the line between the building to remain and the all new glass showroom he labeled it as existing to remain it never yeah, and, was and that's totally cool with us yeah. it's just that you can't walk away from that and saying the staff gave wrong information because at the time it came out it was accurate and they corrected it after we picked it up which is what planning staff is supposed to do so my the basis of my question is is that in staff calculations based on what you had before you there was a line missing that could have really not uh, perhaps uh, is what was misconstrued is that what I'm hearing is that uh, the, what I'm hearing from you all I don't think there was misconstrued it was they submitted plans that called for one thing and we identified what it called for that it, it may have come out in the wash towards the end of the process but the staff's analysis was the sta staff's analysis and it's okay they said it was a mistake and they corrected it although I think we do have still some incomplete issues with them but we'll work on I mean assuming you you go ahead with the the contract tonight we'll work it out it's it's not a huge deal okay but it's not 2400 square feet demolishing anymore is that what I'm hearing that the, as it stands now 11,520 square feet to be demolished. okay thank you and thank you to my fellow councilwoman for allowing me to jump ahead of her um, Mr. Burgess, you're up next, right? No, it was, it was, you said, but I gave, she gave me her time and okay, then. Okay, Ms. Faircloth, then Mr. Burgess. Okay, I'll be brief. We'll eventually get to, to the actual contract. Yeah. But I just wanted to say in our last meeting, I know several of us had some concerns about the look and the design of the building. And I don't want the community to feel that this is a bait and switch because to me it's not a bait and switch. When I really reflected about that and I, I thought about when you're purchasing um, or, or if you are a franchisee when you're purchasing a franchise you don't have the complete autonomy to dictate the design of the building because the franchisors they have that in place because they want to maintain the consistency and continuity of the buildings be it in Homestead or be it in China somewhere so I, I, I didn't want to get caught up on the look I just wanted to make sure it is a first class building and it's not something that we're just going to whip on that on that um, property. So in the whole scheme of things to me, whether it is built, rebuilt or refurbished, it'll look better than what's there now. So that is my position on it. I have nothing else further to say, but I'm going to move forward with this. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. David, if I could speak to you for a minute, please. Dave. On, on the design, and this goes back when when Walmart built at the corner of uh, 15th and Highway 1. I brought up a, a, a thing, and, and, and our former mayor chastised me that this wasn't somewhere else. He, uh, they have different levels of architecture outsides that they that they put. 
and and this was a level two B minus or something that we got where I was looking for an A. So my question to David is, does Hyundai have different levels of how they design things according to where they're going? Because my, my thought is, we may not be the Coral Gables, we may not be the Buckhead in Atlanta or something like that, but I want Homestead to strive for the best product that's out there. And I don't know that, that Hyundai has one level, two levels, or three levels like a lot of different retailers do when they're bringing in a piece of property. And Mr. Arza knows that he's, when he has meetings with me and a developer comes down here, I don't want little box houses. I want something that's nice. I want something that's big. We're done with the box house cutter, cookie cutter days. So my question to you is, are there different levels of Hyundai design dealerships, or is it all one across the nation? And is this the A team that we're getting in Homestead, or is it a B minus? I'm going to answer this question as follows. I am the architect for the dealership next to the Hyundai National Headquarters in Atlanta. Uh, I am currently working on that project and working on this project simultaneously. Uh, Hyundai is investing in the dealership in Atlanta uh, because they're trying to make it their flagship store. This store is every bit as nice as the Hyundai store in Atlanta. And there is only one criteria that Hyundai uses, and we are meeting all of them. So this is the A team. I wouldn't drive into Hilton Head, South Carolina, and find a, a better Hyundai dealership with the, some kind of big structure that just comes out and grabs you. No, and the thing that kind of breaks my heart a little bit is that this rendering doesn't depict as well as it could the drama and beauty of this building. It, the glass, for example, which is across 60% of the front of this store, which is the same as the rendering you originally saw, uh, wasn't rendered as opaque, perhaps, so it's transparent and not as visible in this rendering. But this dramatic triangular facade, this triangular, triangular canopy um, is, is unique and uh, and beautiful, I believe. Uh, the, uh, the glass facade will be as transparent as it can be within the context of the South Florida Building Code. And uh, this will be a, this will be a uh, tool for the community, I am quite certain. Thank you. And, and to my colleagues and, and to our attorney, the one thing that would make me comfortable, <clears throat> because with him not having the dealership until everything's built, I don't want things going south, and Willie's Willie's used car shows up down there. So I get I, to me to be comfortable with this deal tonight. We need to put the no transfer clause back in the contract. Okay. Um. Very quiet. The, Very quiet. Gathering my thoughts, Mr. Burgess. <laughs> uh, the, the difficulty with a no transfer clause is that it, it um, doesn't work in the real world when you're dealing with lenders. And I'm just telling you what makes me comfortable. And I'm a vote. So you guys better come up with an answer quick because I'm getting ready to call for the vote. I still got the next question. It was in the it was in the original contract and got struck here at, on the floor that one night, or it was in our proposed contract, I should say. Hey, Councilman Burgess. Yeah. My partner Greg, Greg Traverini from the RT Automotive. He has a lot more experience with this dealership contracts, rules, and guidelines. So he's going to take two minutes to answer your question. Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone, need. Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, thank you guys for all your time you guys invested in this project. And what Jay was saying, I was the one dealing with all the lenders. I still am on this. And the big issue before with that is that all the lenders say it's going to cloud the title. And the issue with that, if, if there's another entity that could take this from us, 
lenders are not going to fund the construction, the land, the whole, the whole deal. That's our big concern with I that. Can't, I, 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 maybe we I could can't, talk can't with them me. again about it. I want you to be sir, happy. I want you guys to be comfortable. Yeah. Try to speak into the microphone. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. I yes, sir. I'm sorry. The only thing I can tell you is I'm not comfortable in giving this to you tonight if there's not some guarantee that a Hyundai dealership is going to be there or this property ends up back in the hands of 65,000 people that are selling it to you tonight. Can you give us one second? I mean, yeah. one, one second there. We can do our other meeting and come back to you if you need more time. No, I, I mean, I think just one second. I want to run some. Do you want me to get Mr. Molinato? Okay. Well, I, well I know, I know. Do you want me to I, have Mr. Molinato? Okay. No, this is for staff, so this okay. would have to Jay, Jay, hold on. Jay, you got a few seconds. Mr. Molinato wants to ask a question. Mr. Molinato. And, and uh, I would, I would agree with, uh, you know, I was, I was going to prefer, I was going to propose that whatever decision we make in regards, if we're going to move forward, I wanted to make sure that we need meet the needs of our colleagues, of everyone up here. Our, our concern is that we never lose, um, and, and like you said, get, get a. Uh, anything less than than what we expect that we're coming to expect here in Homestead, which is a great product. So you know somehow we need to work. And I and I heard earlier through staff, uh, through a council that I'm that I'm sure that we can work something out that will guarantee this car car dealership. Am I correct, Richard, in that that thought? Lily. Uh, the question is whether we could put something in the contract to make sure that um, that. Whoever owns it, Hyundai dealership, ends up on this spot. Yes, we, we could, at your direction, we could add language to the contract to that effect. Okay, and, and, I, and I guess just, you know, whatever we need to, whatever we need to do to just, you guys understand, we don't want to lose any, any ground on this. Um, you want to say something quick in regards to Okay, so, so I agree with our, our um, Councilman Burgess. Um, and what you guys told me before, I'm comfortable in the sense that I know we could put some something in there that's going to, you know, hold the feet to the fire, um, and and maybe you guys should work that out, and, and Mr. Manager, make sure that that happens. That's our concern. Well, as long as we get direction on what you want, we'll make sure we memorialize it. But we we're going to need very clear direction because of the sensitivity of this. So whatever mm -hmm. you can do to. You know, the, the main thing us. is that we, we just, you know, obviously there's there's an issue where if we, we put this, what we're asking for right now, they're not going to be able to get a loan. So we need to work with them in their language that says, you know, make sure that they can get the loan and the financing they need to do this project, but make sure that we don't lose it at the same time. Again, well, we can write anything you want once we get very clear policy direction mm -hmm. on what exactly you want us to secure, because we have had some back and forth with them and... I think it's better if we get very clear direction from you all tonight. Would that be through us, or would council help in regards of uh, putting the language together with them at this point? Yeah, we, we can certainly help once we receive direction from council as to what protections you would like to add to the contract. Right. Okay. Right, I think what we're saying is that if you tell us the ultimate result specifically of what you're trying to accomplish, needs to be a car we can sit down. A, a good quality A car dealership, right? Well, those Where, are the kind of things, those kind of are the broad that statements we that we're okay. looking for that we can memorialize. And, and just one last comment, and, and I know that um, I kept hearing uh, my colleagues uh, talk about the tearing down of, you know, I don't recall in our conversations, um, did we have a requirement that needed this build, that this building had to be tearing down completely? Was there something in the language? that we had in our contract that said, you have to tear this building completely down in order for this to happen? No, there was no such requirement. Because, uh, so in the contract, we never said, you have to, I mean, regardless, look, you're, you're about to uh, uh, um, bring, you know, bring a big, big project on board. You're excited and, you know, you're willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. Um, you know, that you're going to say things um, sometimes that could kind of hurt you. Uh, but in this case, I just want to make sure that our contract, 
there was nothing that says that we had to tear down this building. So, and according to staff, from what I'm hearing is that this is actually quite okay if we um, um, we don't we don't have to tear down the building. We can use it accordingly. But we're not passing judgment on that. All, all we're saying is that whatever you want is what we'll, we'll, we'll paper. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, they did make representations through a rendering, and right. then they've regularly denied that they that submitted that, that rendering. Yeah. So but it's not been in the I'm still confused My point is whether that, they admit that or not, right. that that's a different But it's issue. not in a contract where we have to hold the feet to the fire and say, hey, no, you, know, you said it, it's in a contract. That's kind of why I'm hoping you all make a very clear policy de decisions tonight so that we don't have to come back to you and right. we can just finish this up if, if that's your will. Okay. That's it for me. Mr. Williams, then Mr. Yeah. Burgess. Uh, um, and this is a question to my colleague. When, when, uh, what, what, do, what do you mean, or help me understand the fact uh, in putting in that clause? What do you, I guess, what are your ultimate, what are you looking to achieve with that, with that word? Um, and what are you looking you for? Transfer? Yeah, what does that mean? I don't, my, I'm trying to, because I was looking sure back through the minutes and I didn't. My ultimate see goal is to make sure that the city ends up with a class A product there. Right. I don't want them to not be able to get the 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 product that's been promised to the city. Right. And we end up with something that's underneath that. Okay. So and they sell it uh, nobody can get a dealership or something happens down there and we end up with a lower level right. something or you know I got you. So used car lot or whatever, garage, whatever right. they try to come back in, somebody would come back in for it. Right. This would be like a high end franchise. So let me, can can I ask a question? Yes sir. You have the it, floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so your your real major concern is to make sure that the product of what they're saying as far as the the grade level of the product is there. And so when you say no transfer, that's what's I'm trying well, to I don't want them like I said if they don't receive their dealership license oh, okay and then they go out and sell it to somebody else mm -hmm. and it doesn't end up being a, a, a new car dealership mm -hmm. or a class product down there and we end up with something that we don't foresee right or that I don't foresee, foresee yeah. being a great addition to our city okay then I don't want to give away a city's asset for something that's not going to be a class A class, product. Right. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, so the so so basically, uh, Mr. Attorney, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. What's your name? <laughs> Lillian Arango. Lily. L can I just call you Lillian? Yes, you may. All right, thank you, uh, Miss Lillian. Um, what language can we put in there that really depicts what Mr. Burgess is saying? Um, is that the right? Uh, word that he's using to to depict his outcome yes. I believe I'm hearing two different things one is that the property be operated as a Hyundai dealership or similar class a motor vehicle facility for a certain period of years okay um, I also heard no transfer or no sale uh, for a certain period of time am I correct okay so is that a language what what language would you write to the, to pick his yes, concern. You, you may recall, Councilman, in the original contract presented to Council at the time of approval, there was there were some clauses in there. One specifically dealt with permitted use of the property, and obligated the buyer to use the property as a Hyundai dealership or okay. a similar new motor vehicle dealership for okay. seven. I believe it was seven years or a period of time. Right. There was also language in that original contract that prohibited sale or transfer or transfer of ownership for a certain amount of time. Okay. And if there was a sale, there was a, I believe, a penalty of 250000 That was to serve as a deterrent. Deterrent of as that. As a deterrent, I, correct. I remember. Okay. So with, in light of that, uh, um, Jay, I almost forgot your name. Um, what the attorneys have just said, um, is that, it, is, is that, um, I don't, I don't foresee that being an issue. Is that a deterrent on where you all are now? Just what the attorney said. I know you all had your own caucus or whatever, but the attorney oh, yeah. was saying something that was, that was dropping nuggets to help you all. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Um, we had an intensive uh, amount of questions. Did you hear what she said? Yes. You sure? 
I, I remember what she said, and uh, I know what she said, and we. So is that a problem of what she just said? Because of um, uh, bank financing, a lien holder is it will be a problem for us. Hang on, I, I think Lily brought up two issues. And I, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but uh, and she'll correct me if I if I miss if I misspeak. But one was the a an agreement that would that uh, the buyer would agree to build a first class dealership. A second was a, an agreement that. Well, what's wrong with that? What's that, wrong with adding that in there? I, I don't think there so is anything issue, wrong right? with that. That's not an issue. So that's not the way. What's the, next? The the other one was was one that uh, is is quite frankly a, a very difficult issue for us, and that is um, transfer restrictions. The um, the agreement that the franchise or Hyundai will have with RT automotive is that once the franchise is awarded to them, mm -hmm. they must maintain that franchise for a certain number of years. Failing which, if they ever try to sell it, Hyundai has a right of first refusal oh, okay. to uh, come in and operate it themselves or to designate another dealer to operate it. In other words, for a certain number of years, and so I don't know how long it is. But, but why couldn't we add that into the contract, though? Could, would it, I mean, just to make it clean, would, could that be added in there that will solve Mr. Burgess' uh, concerns? And also, um, I mean, if, if Honda is, al is, is, is already doing that, what's the problem in adding that to our contract to give it a, a, the same thing? If you're saying that Hyundai has this particular model, they have a first right of refusal, has to stay a dealership, a Hyundai dealership, if you do sell it, Hyundai has a right of first refusal to make sure and to come and take over the site control, right? Because site, because my understanding is that Hyundai still preserves site control. Is that not right or no? Yes, sir, that's so, right. So you all are just franchisees, right? And so, as a franchisee, you have to, uh, you know, either you, you, you have to go by all of their standards. But what would be the issue in satisfying Mr. Burgess's concern by adding what you all have in Hyundai's contract, or what Hyundai's having in you all's contract, to just add it into the city so that the city gets protected? Why can't, I mean, this will be a copy and paste to me, it looks like. That mean, it's not messing up your finance deal. If, you, if Hyundai's already, if Hyundai's the one that you all have to satisfy, why can't you just take that clause out of what Hyundai and put it into our contract that protects the city? Yeah, it, yeah if, if we have the site control in there with the franchise, the city would be comfortable with that. I want the city to be comfortable with the residents. The, the issue we had before was a non-transfer clause, and that's where all the banks got gun-shy and nervous. We're betting on the city of Homestead. The bank's betting on us to go in there as operators and operate as a Hyundai franchise. And the problem is when we were dealing with other lenders, and this is why we kept stripping it out before, as soon as they put a non-transfer clause or a penalty, it clouded the title in their mind. That was their concern. So if it's just strictly about a new vehicle franchise operating there, as you stated, yes, sir, we would have site control with Hyundai and guarantee 10 years it's going to be a Hyundai. If we, if we walk away or fall out, they have first right refusal to come in and acquire the property from us and can continue operating as a Hyundai franchise. So if that's enough to, for everyone to be comfortable in the council and Mr. Burgess, if, if that helps out with your concerns, that would be 100% we could handle that. It's going to be all in the state control. Mr. Burgess, I, I, I will yield to Mr. Burgess if he, for his if, if, if our Burgess. fine city attorneys can get that dra drafted up where I could read that and, and get all that, you know, legal lingo down, and, and I, um, I I could probably agree with that, but I'd like to see what Hyundai's uh, um, agreement is before I agree to their agreement, because I don't know what it is. I mean, well, you're stating, you're stating on the record tonight that Hyundai says that, they're, that if, if, if something goes wrong, they come in and take it over. So obviously that must be a public record that I'm, uh, that I'm able to read. So I would like to read what Hyundai says because we're relying on Hyundai's uh, language. 
So I would like to read what they say, but also I'd like to clear up. I didn't say just build a good car dealership. I said it's got to be a, a new car dealership. I'm not going to settle for this thing falling through at the end of the day and ending up with Willie's used autos over there. Okay. So I'm, I'm very clear, uh, Councilman Burgess. And those are my two. Mo those are my two requests. But Except I would like to read, and I'm sure my county, uh, uh, excuse me, my city attorney, would like to read what Hyundai has to say too before we could agree to that. Okay. Uh, it, it's very. I, I, I'm very. I'm very clear what you want. Um, it will be a world class. I mean, there's. I believe there's a camera going. Uh, everything's been recorded here, I would imagine, or recorded on voice, but. When it comes to Hyundai site control, until all deal agreement is... What I'm asking is that we see that. I can't, I, I'm tired of arguing about it. We're either going to get it, and our attorneys are going to look at it, and, and they're going to say, yes, this protects what you're asking for, or it doesn't. Because I've been sitting here for an hour and a half already, and we've had more meetings. Right. And we're asking you guys to give us those papers, and we're asking you guys to agree to, uh, or not we, I'm asking you guys to agree to a couple different things. And if we can't agree to them here within the next two or three minutes, I'm going to ask for the call. If you think you can enter into a negotiations with our, con with our attorneys to have those things entered into the contract, then we can move forward. Because the contract that you have now is technically null and void. I will do my best to ask Hyundai to provide us that. Because I'm going to make sure that if we move forward, that the city is protected. Because I just sat in the other room tonight on a deal where the city thought we were protected, and we have been in litigation now for three years with some guy that just frivolously brings lawsuits up. It took us, we had to go have lawsuits to have him evicted. And I'm tired of things like that happening to our citizens and to us up here because it doesn't and make us look good. We're either going to be protected and fully protected, or we're not going to do it. And I totally, totally respect the councilman, but based on my, my background, uh, how much I served down here in South, uh, South Day community, I, I understand, sir. But uh, I will do my best if uh, Hyundai Motor uh, give us a description of their site control. Mr. Manager. Mayor, whatever is decided here, we're just going to need very clear direction as to what what specifically you want to try to, to, to enforce and then we if if and then we just we need a direction and right. then whatever that is we'll do okay so the, the, the question before us is the, the applicant is asking for us to waive this portion of the contract which states that if this um, license isn't acquired by October 1st which has passed either party could back out of the deal if we take that out tonight how does that protect Mr. Burgess's question about uh, the flipping the flipping question? Because, again, once this is gone, well, there's... I mean, that was no one thing I was unclear on is, is the decision of the board to not make a decision tonight until language is drafted and brought back to you, or uh, I'm, I'm not really clear on what you want us to do. Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to couch the question, because the question is, uh, all of this is part of it, but the question is to... They're asking us to waive this portion of the contract tonight. So that is really the question of the council. Are they comfortable taking this out of the contract? Because this is the last area of, of what could possibly be what this council has the ability to, con to look at this contract with. So, I mean, I've stated on the record that, that I'm, I'm not in favor of right. it generally. So it's it's... You know, it's the rest of the council, but we, you know, let's let's hone in on this question, I guess. And and Mr. Burgess, you're, you know, um, most likely the man in the hot seat. So at this particular point, we, we need a motion on on the table, one way or the other, for which is what the applicant is asking for. Correct me if I'm wrong, Richard. The applicant is asking for us to waive this portion of the contract. And, man. With with the with the cap what he's uh, what they've asked for no. is that we not exercise that portion of the contract and the contract be revised to take that into consideration in terms of removing that those requirements. Um, and there's three sections which are listed on Exhibit actually, yeah, One. Yeah, there's actually another section which we identified and we spoke with their attorney mm -hmm. about today. So it's basically, does the council is the council want to? 
um, not exercise that provision and terminate and, and direct us to change the contract or not. Okay. All right. Mr. Williams? Yeah, let me just, when, Mayor, I'm just trying to understand, you know, I'm big on words, so I don't want to miss it. You're saying um, when you say the applicant want us to waive, um, what is, what do, you, what do you mean by that? I'm trying to find that. I'm, I'm asking the attorney to give us. Oh, when you say because when you say waive, it gives like a indication that they're not going to be held that that particular. But I think what I'm under, correct me if I'm wrong. Are they because of the contract? This is on the front end of it. They can't build. They mean they can't get it until the building is built. So all my understanding is that it's going towards the back end of the contract. Is that what I'm? I, it's just amending it to reflect in the end part of the contract instead of the front part. If, as if that's the council's direction, currently it's a question of the timing of the license. The way that these four provisions are drafted, um, it anticipated that the dealership license would be obtained prior to closing. Right, prior. So but those provisions would need to be amended according to, to your direction if it's the will of the council that we require them to obtain the dealership license in the contract post-closing, right. we can certainly amend and add that provision as well. But is that what the applicant is asking for? The applicant is asking to uh, amend those, those three provisions right, in the I'm contract. Reading. Yes, the applicant did not specifically request that that requirement be put in for the license post-closing. Okay, right, it was pre, it was Correct. the that we have fixed So the contract. We're, now they're asking for post-closing. So no, we're not. Wait. So I want. I don't want anybody to get the idea that we're waiving anything, because waiving means something totally different. So it's it's putting it from the front part of the uh, application. They can't. They they can't receive it because the state statute. They have to have the building built and then apply for the like. Is that is that what Correct. you understand? Correct. And and uh, changing the provision that says that either party could terminate the contract. I got that part. That's the part we're beating up on. But the meat of it is that. The app is asking for the front end of it, of getting a dealer's license. They can't happen anyway until the building is built and done to the back end. That's what we're voting on tonight. Is that what I'm, what I'm understanding? Well, the applicant hasn't specifically requested that we move it to the back end, as you state. They're asking us to say that the license cannot be obtained prior to the closing and to fix those provisions in the contract to, to correct that. Okay, so um, just be amending. Right. So I think, though, what she's saying, though, is that absent adding that provision that it would require them at the back end to get the license, right. there would be nothing in the contract, correct? Right. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilman or Mayor, can, can I no. make one comment, please? About Not really, because we're ready to move with this. Okay. Because the Vice Mayor? I'm tired. No, I mean, I, I'll wait and see what the motion is. I, don't, I have no clue what we're actually making motions for, what the vote's going to be. And then once we get that question on the table, I may have a question or I may have a comment. But, but let, me, let me get clarification on where we're going. But the, the, issue, the issue in the question, I, I, the way that I see it is, if these provisions, these three provisions are omitted from the, or they're, they're not in the contract, they can close, they can flip, they cannot construct. There's a lot of things that they cannot do because they were already taken out of the, the original contract. So this is really the last opportunity for the council necessarily to, po you know, to possibly weigh in on this. That's the way I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong. And if I can respond to this, the reason why we're asking for specific policy direction here is if you just do what they ask. Right. Some of the things that you've spoken about over the last hour and a half are not in there. So the first thing is, do you want to approve what they've asked to remove from the contract? And second is, is there anything that you want to add into the contract? And if so, then we need to know specifically what you're trying to achieve. And then we will try to draft the language accordingly. And then the final decision is, do you want to give the broad policy direction tonight and approve pending the language change? Or do you want us to write the language and come back to you and have another discussion. And if, if this, if this uh -huh. amendment to the contract is allowed, what leverage does the city have to get them to come to the table on any of the questions that were talked about tonight? Well, that's... So, okay, I, I, so I I there's not, absence of this, absence of this being left in the contract, 
the negotiation position of the council is severely diminished by any of the questions that were asked here tonight. Oh. We've tried very hard to stay out of the okay. policy discussion here, so I'd prefer that you guys make that decision. Okay, so Mr. Burgess? Uh, wait, I'm sorry, man. I thought I, I, when I made my statement, I was still. Okay, but Mr. Williams? Thank you. Thank you. So, um, would you read for us so that I'm mis not misinterpreting the three items that they're asking for? And what does each one of those mean? Because that seems like I'm, I'm getting two sets of saying that we're losing any control over the contract negotiations after all of this is done. And the truth of the matter is, if this small piece was not in it, I don't think we will even be here today. But would you read the three items? That they, and what does each item mean for me so that I know what I'm voting on? Yes, and this is taken directly from buyer's attorney's request. The buyer's it, attorney? So that's put in writing that's by them. Okay. So I'm going to read number one. Section 9 should be amended to delete both parties' rights to terminate the contract after September 28, 2015, October 1, 2015, by your calculation, because of RT's inability to obtain a dealership license by that date. Okay. We would propose to delete all that portion of Section 9 that begins if buyer is unable to obtain the license, dot, dot, dot. We now know that all of the development approvals detailed in Section 13 are conditions precedent and not the only ones to the issuance of a dealership license. Okay. What does that mean? That means that they would no longer be required to obtain the license prior to closing by the stated date of September 28th or October 1, and neither party would be able to terminate for that failure to obtain the license. All right. I agree with Okay. Check. Number two of their request, section 13.7 needs to be amended to delete reference to the dealership license as a trigger date for the 10th month period to obtain development approvals. What does that mean? Okay. Currently, section 13.7 provides that the buyer must obtain all of their development approvals. That includes the rezoning, the special uh, exception application, et cetera. The latter to occur, 10 months after the latter to occur of the end of their inspection period or attainment of the dealership license. All right. Okay. So because we, we have now been told that the dealership license cannot be obtained prior to closing, mm -hmm. that section would need to be amended as well. All right. Check. Next. Number three, section 16 needs to be amended to delete the requirement that a dealership license be obtained before closing. The closing should be conditioned solely on development approvals. If this change is not made, we have a circular problem and a closing will never occur. RT obviously needs to close before it can build the dealership and the dealership has to be built before a dealership license will issue. That section 16 pertains to the date of closing of this transaction and currently it reads that it will occur 10 days after the last to occur of either the development approvals obtained Mm -hmm. or the dealership license. So development approvals are what? Development um, approvals are all of your zoning and land use requirements required to build the project. Mm -hmm. Those involve uh, your rezoning request, site plan approval, special exception, and I believe now there's a variance that's required. Okay, so once that is done, either one, so once that is done, then the closing can happen. Is that, that what That is the buyer's request, okay. correct. Okay, all right. And so where in all of those is the city protected? You, that that gives an opening from I'm trying to understand where you know answer be prudent to my colleagues and understand how does that leave us holding the bag. Right, all of those requests, as as requested by buyers council, pertain to the dealership license. Just only. dealership license totally. Correct. So nothing else that we've really kind of all talked around, but this deals with specifically the dealer's license. Either one, they get it after the whole building is built, or the development right for the closing part, or the development um, development uh, approvals. So once development appro approvals are done, then the, that's when the closing happens. That's correct. Whichever one comes first, but we know development approvals have to be first because you can't build a building without development approvals, right? Right. The closing so, would be 10 days after 
the issuance of all development approvals and all appeal periods expiring. Next question is with development services. How long is that process? Typically that process is uh, about four to six months. Four to six months. So the development approvals will have to happen in order for the closing according to what they want within the contract, right? Yes or no? I'm trying to... Yes. Okay. Um, Ten months after the development approvals, would, the closing would occur. Um, I believe the way the contract is structured now, they've already submitted development approvals are required to be obtained by May 29, 2014. Okay. All right. All final approvals. All final approvals by that by that time and date. Okay. All right. So th what that so what that does for me it helps me to put things back into perspective, helps me to understand uh, where we really are and not you know talking in circles or convoluting the conversation. Uh, so I'm very clear now on what they're asking, and I hope my colleagues are very clear, and the public is very clear uh, on what they're asking with this uh, dealer's license. And so the closing could not happen until after uh, the development approvals um, are made. And so, you know, I don't, I think I'm very clear and ready uh, to vote on, on what the attorney has uh, educated me on. Thank you. Mr. I now release the floor, Mayor. Mr. Burgess. Thank you. Lillian, to you. And, and, and maybe I'm not following this right. If Hyundai never issues them a license, then Hyundai's documents would never be mean anything to the city. Is that a correct statement? If they don't issue them a, a, a dealer's license <clears throat> upon completion of the building and all, does that mean that Hyundai would never have control of the dealership? So therefore, things could could never, as I'm trying to prevent, things could go on because Hyundai doesn't wouldn't have any control over the land. Right. I, I haven't seen their agreement, Councilman Burgess. As you indicated, we have not been privy to that. But, but the, the that license is a state-issued license. State issue. Right. But they're saying Hyundai takes control. But if Hyundai, uh, uh, even though the state license, once the state license is there, they would fall under the, you think that they would maybe fall under the Hyundai document, um, contract documents or whatever they would be. I'm just trying to make sure as I look into this. Right. I, I assume And that, I know you haven't yeah. read them, so it's hard yeah, to... I haven't read it, um, but the license comes from the state, and I assume it needs to be renewed periodically once it's issued. And in order to renew the license, you have to meet the criteria pursuant to state law. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Maldonado. So, so at this point, are we, and, and how do we craft this motion in the sense of are we going to remove what they're asking for us and then put into place the other requirements that Councilman Burgess and other council members have spoken about so that we can move forward on this? Right? So I would move that, that we would accept um, make a motion that we will accept their agreement, what, what, what they asked for. And, uh, and then to add on the protections that we had spoken about this whole hour, which is well documented um, in regards to what Councilman Burgess wrote. Now, the last thing you said, uh, um, uh, Mr. Manager, was that will this be pending on that? Um, are we going to vote yes to approve it as is and move forward, or are we going to wait for that documentation to come in and then have to vote for it again? Am I correct? Right. Uh, right. Assuming you clarify what other items that you want in the contract, then it's, are they general enough to say we approve these changes with these additions and then the staff will just make the language changes and approved, or whether we have to draft the language and come back to you and the only thing I would say is because there's been a lot of back and forth with them, I'd be very surprised if whatever our staff drafts on this, that we're not going to have another tussle. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's not been, it's not been easy to, to deal with them. Did you make yeah. could you, uh, can, you restate the motion. The mo can you restate the motion? 
I, I can have the clerk restate the motion, but I, th I think that we need clarification on the last part of the motion. The first part I understand, which is we, ex we you're directing us to implement the amendments that they've requested. I, right. We understand that. Mm -hmm. The second part is, and to add language to the contract to take care of these things that have been talked about for an hour and a half. That part is, I mean, I'm here, I'm listening, but it's not clear exactly what you want us to accomplish. And then number two is it's not clear whether you want us to just draft language and... See, and a lot has been said, so we don't know, is it consensus, the fact that one person said it, does that mean you all agree? We just need some general sense of what is it that you want, if anything, because it may be that you're okay with deleting the language and that's it. We don't, I have, I don't have no idea where you all stand here, so if it's you want to delete the language and you're done, that's very easy and can be done yeah. tonight. Um, you wanted to add, add on to that, Jim? So, so can I leave the motion to state it and then anyone else would uh, amend or add on to it so that we're clear on, on, on the final direction? We have part one and two in place. The final one is there. Um, well, actually part two, we need the clarification again from what we, we spoke about. Um, so just for the clarification, may I say something, please? Right Mayor? here. Is there a what? second on the motion? Is there a oh, second on the motion? I don't know there was a motion on the table. Is there a second? And then I, I would ask the, the, um, our city clerk to, to, um, to read back um, what, what they were asking for, what we kind of clarified that they would agree to according to um, <laughs> Councilman Burgess. Uh, you, okay, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Are you saying that, that we amend the language of the contract that deals with section 9, section 13, and section 16. Yes. Yes. Is that, is that right? Yes. Okay. Then I'm hearing from Mr. Burgess that the language in which Hyundai uses a site control to maintain site control from Hyundai that it cannot be transferred um, that the language in which Hyundai use we will insert that into the contract to provide the protection on behalf of what um, the, uh, Councilman Burgess will feel comfortable with is uh, yes. assuming it protects assuming, us. assuming it, it reads what you have right indicated is that, that, that would, right that would be one part of my amendment that'd be one part what so that's what i'm here what is the other part it needs to become because that dealership and license and hyundai stuff doesn't take control uh -huh. site control until the end right this place could be built and never make it that far for some reason there could be a it could become oh. something else and my fear is that's okay and that's thought, not what not, I, not my fear my thought right. just a, a, a general thing because things mm -hmm. happen right and I don't want to see this has to end up as a new car dealership right so that it will and it and 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 mr. J Rifkin must be the proprietor okay um, so I don't know. I, I don't know how, now that, that I'm going to get. get what, you got me on that I one. I don't know sold. how. To, <laughs> I don't know. So that, that I can get what I'm being sold here at this from the right. Program. Okay. Is there a limit of time on that, Mr. Burgess? As long is it a limit of time? As long as the Hyundai have the site control, or what? How is uh, it, is it for? Well, we'd like, I'd he, like to see what they if, have. I hate to say this, but if he le if he leaves this earth tomorrow, yeah. then <laughs> we need to get a second on the motion. Really, a second. Well, we if yeah, and Mayor, the other clarification I would ask is, you're relying on Hyundai's language, but what happens if their deal with Hyundai falls through? Yes. So, it's just... Right. No, and want, that's what I was... That's, well, my, that was my, my point that I was trying to get at earlier. If, there, if, if it falls through well, my, and, and all that, still had to, then, then we've, I want to you know, make nobody, sure the city's protected because but, I don't but, want to end up with a used car lot down there. Okay, let's, you know... Okay. Can I finish? Mr. Maldonado had the floor. He made a motion. Right, but he then... I indicated to him at least to help, you know, just to make sure that we're on, on the same page, you know, because, again, we're all... There's, there's bits and pieces here. 
So Mr. Burgess has a piece, I have a piece, they have a piece, so I'm relying on them to fill in. I, it's, so, it, can I say something, yes. Mr. Martin? To me, I understand it. if it's not a Hyundai dealership, it's not a deal, period. So is, 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 is that what my understanding is? I don't think that's under that contract, but... If it's not a Hyundai dealership, then it's not a deal. Right, that, that's currently not in the contract. I'm sorry? It is? It's currently not in the contract that it be operated right. as a Hyundai dealership. So I, what's wrong with that language adding that? in to say if it's not a Hyundai dealership, it's nothing else that can go there. And then that protects us. If it's not a Hyundai dealership, period, I'm not talking about to come back and talk about a Mercedes or, or BMW or anything like that. If it's not a Hyundai dealership, then the deal is non-go. And I think that will give us all the protection uh, that we could be looking there. for. Yeah. I'm not looking at them. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the, 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 the crust of this. If it's not a Hyundai dealership, then there's no deal. That we're, I'm, I, I'm being how, how understood does, that, does, that, how, that, that um, in order to satisfy but, what I'm hearing is that it must remain a Hyundai dealership. If not, then there's no, it, it, in other words, it must be in the contract to say that. Well, it, what would happen though if Hyundai leaves in a year? That's I mean, the, but, you wouldn't be able to protect that if you're. But what John has long term. But what John has proffered is that Mr. Ripskin will have to be the proprietor. If well, he dies tomorrow, then <laughs> there's well, no. Or he can't be the proprietor. I mean, I mean, don't I mean, put the jinx on the guy. Yeah, well, I'm not. But I'm just saying, if you're going to be that technical, you can't. You, my, you know, my, so it's got to be an understanding that. In, in George. You know, you said what you said, but it's, you know, I, my understanding is that it's going to be a Hyundai dealership and period. Yeah, I but, had no other intentions right. of, of anything other than that. So my motion uh, to add to that. Jimmy, to I'm going to tell you, I can't that. go with that. No, I'm not saying you could go with it. I'm saying that what Mr. Maldonado has asked from what I've heard. So I don't know. You can state your own, but I, that's what I was understanding. Just to, Mr. Chair, just to um, move it, Mr. Just we, to move we've it. We've got a motion in a second, but we don't know what the motion yeah. is. So you could always add no, to but, it, no. a motion. But if there's a motion in a second on the floor, so if Councilman Williams wants to make an amendment to that motion. My amendment then is what I need said. A second. I don't know what John means. I thought I did, but he's saying he can't go. So I, he has to articulate what he's saying. I was just only trying to understand what from he what, what he was saying he sent from what I just restated he said it's, it's not good so uh, I, I second Mr. Maldonado um, with that uh, friendly addendum to his motion and you can amend it as well yeah you can always okay, so amend it to can, say. can someone state the motion because that as, as not was put on me. the table anyone I just, you, you restate the motion you see, I just I, I don't I think there's a lack of clarity of what the motion motion well, is. Thought, Again, the the motion was with the we're going to is it amend what they're asking? Amend the motion, the first part, which is removing the contract items before us, the three items. Amend that. The second motion would be to put in place the items that are going to assure that we have a Hyundai dealership and homestead in that location. That would be my, the second motion. So that's, a, that's the motion that Councilman Maldonado is making. Mm -hmm. That part, at that point, I, I, we understand what that means. Right. That it's got to be a Hyundai dealership. So two parts. One, agreeing to the amendments that they've requested, mm -hmm. and two, to add language to the contract that it will be uh, that it will be a Hyundai dealership. So that's the motion on the floor for the moment. And that was uh, that's uh, that Mr. 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 Williams is seconded that. Uh, Vice Mayor, did you have the? Yeah. I mean, Mr. Mr. Burgess, did you you have it next, then the Vice Mayor, it, or? However you guys want to go. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still, I at least have an idea now what our discussion is about. So okay. that's good. We're, we're, I'm getting there. I can ask some questions. But my, my question, I guess, to the attorney is, first is procedural. So if, if we decide that we're going to go forward with what they've requested, 
then does that essentially make that contract whole and essentially eliminate this deadline that was October 1st? Is this being back spilled? Okay, so then the secondary part where we're going to now make changes to the contract, how do we go about doing that if essentially we make the contract whole with then no ability to change it? So essentially then the best way about doing this is we're going to have to do amendment to this contract outright, correct? So no, so I guess, I guess as far as parsing what the motion should be or what our discussion should be about, if we ratify or approve what they requested as the amendment, does that then take away our ability to have, I mean, it's all semantics as far as it's worded, but I mean, how does this motion need to be read so that you we guys would, can We would do it at the same it? time. There would be an amendment to the contract giving us them the, what they right. have asked for, and then to the extent that the council would adopt the motion that's on the floor, a section would be added to the contract at the same time that says it must be a Hyundai dealership. That's the way procedurally it would work. And the okay. contract, there would be an amended contract that would take care of their amendments and the amendment that the council has requested. Right. That, but that it, passed. Would, it would be essentially an amendment to the, it wouldn't be the, I, yes, I understand what you're saying, but my only concern is, is that if you, if you agree to what they have and then the contract becomes whole such that there, there's no longer a need to amend. So it would have to be, it would almost have to be an amendment to this contract, not an actual ratification of what they've requested. No, no, it's an it's agree it's it's basically directing staff to to in, to put into the contract right. the amendments they've requested, in addition to the what the what the uh, council has requested, and bring right. it back to the council for approval. That's what the motion would be. Okay, that that I agree with because now you're saying that they're everything's an amendment. It's not it's not agreeing to what they agree to and then trying to put an amendment on. So it's it's just one big amendment. And then my next question, though, the only concern that I have, or one of the concerns that I have, is that this, this talk about making sure it's a Hyundai dealership, the biggest problem we have is the whole purpose of this, this contract as we current have it was that they were going to get the license to guarantee that they were going to have a Hyundai dealership before they closed. And so now we're back to how do you protect the fact that they're going to be owners of the property before they get the Hyundai dealership license or, or anything. So that, that's, that's what you guys need to address to make sure that whatever safeguards you're trying to put in place are effectuated. Because am I not correct? Well, it, then, then the issue becomes about what kind of remedy do you want right, to enforce that? And again, that's no more teeth. policy than it is anything else. Right, no, no, correct. But that's the thing is it has no teeth because if it goes on the back end and they don't get their license, whether they do or don't, then, then how, how does the city get their property back or what is the remedy? So there's, there's a whole another le level of discussion that needs to be had by the council to figure out how is that safeguard going to be implemented. So that's the only other concern I have is that we can say it, they have to be a Hyundai, it has to be a Hyundai dealership, but contractually they're going to really own the property before anything is ever decided about what the use of that property is going to be. And if they don't receive that use, then how does the city get the property back? What is the remedy for that, that failure to occur? And right now that's not being addressed. So that's something else that needs to be discussed as these safeguards will be put in. So I reserve any additional comments as the, as the motion progresses. Mr. Burgess. Thank you. And that, that was going to be my point was that the city is still not protected with, 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 with Mr. Maldonado's uh, amendment. Um, so if, if that's your amendment and want to vote, I can't vote for that because the city's not protected at the end of the day. I told you what I wanted. Lillian, can you repeat what I, what I asked for an hour ago? I'm going to say what I think you, you said and just repeat it. You said it perfectly clear last what time. What I understood was that there would be uh, permitted use on that property for a certain period of time. It would need to be operated as either a Hyundai dealership or a new car dealership. Correct. And the second thing was a prohibition on the sale or transfer of the property. Um, you wanted the buyer to operate the facility and, and stay in the game. I believe yeah. that's what you said. Correct. Would you make that an amendment to add it on there? As stated? I, I will, as stated. Is that a motion? That's my motion. I second the motion. Second the amendment to the motion. To the amendment. Just now, now um, just one question, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, just, last, just to um, um, counsel. Um, in regards to the dealership license, the state just provides that this is going to be a dealership, or is it a license that's specific? It's a here's my uh, the dealership license for Hyundai. Do you know that? I do not, but perhaps buyer's counsel can can answer that question. I believe they have two attorneys here. I do not know if specifically it's issued for a Hyundai dealership or just a new auto dealership.
Yes. The, so, so the question is that when they when the state offers a, a dealership license, is it specific to Hyundai or is it just a dealership license? We uh, is specifically for the Hyundai dealership okay. because the application we filled out basically Hyundai dealership. If I can add just one thing to kind of clear up a few things here, uh, the city or the yeah Homestead City has a letter from Hyundai uh, to 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 that's establish a Hyundai dealership and they gave me an extension if you remember because my letter of intent was going. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. We're, we're good with yeah, that. Well, okay, yeah. just thank you for answering the question. Okay. So there's a second motion. There's a there's a motion and a and a no, second. There's amendment. an amendment to the motion and a second to the amendment of, of the motion. Correct? Richard? There's a motion and a second to the original motion and there's an amendment to the motion. And did you want a remedy in there or you're okay I'm sorry. a remedy because what happens if they don't comply with that is they'll own the property at that point so. Well in other words what remedy does this city have if they don't meet those conditions? Well, uh, I didn't hear a remedy no I didn't hear a Uh. Okay. Work it out. It's important. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Breathe. Say a little prayer. Mr. Burgess? I mean, yes, thank you, Mayor. Sorry. I just wanted to go back and make sure I'd read the original contract had a number of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in it. If things weren't to be weren't to be done, if somebody's looking for a remedy, I don't know. I mean that's the only thing that popped up in my head because it was written originally. Lily, what was the original stricken. provision? Yeah, I, I actually bought the binder from from the council meeting. There was two provisions. There was permitted use of the property, that the property would be operated as a dealership for seven years. And that restriction would be placed in the deed right, but or I don't covenant think it, running it, with the uh, land. According to them, with Hyundai and all that, uh, uh, there's a problem, correct? You're saying that the, they won't accept that? The lender it's won't lenders. accept in a seven-year deal. Yeah. The, so the, what was the other remedy? The was a monetary part, value Right. The of second part was a no-transfer provision. Um, and right. if they did transfer the property or sell it within the seven years, there was a $250,000 penalty or deterrent um, preventing the transfer of ownership. Is anybody, uh, what's your thoughts on that, Mr. Williams? You're shaking your head. <laughs> in, all, in all due respect. I'm just trying to make sure we're uh, protected and we're going to get one. No, we're I have right. no qualms with what you're trying to do um, as your uh, physical uh, fiscal um, responsibility uh, I don't have any issue with that my only concern is that some of the things that we had taken out was because of financing only um, and so when I'm hearing remedy or Oh, well, I'm, I'm understanding if it's not going to be a Hyundai dealership, it's, it's not, if, we, if we just put that into the language, then the deal is not going to go through. It has to be what, what we have stated. And then what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is that these items are, you know, amended. And so um, the city manager threw his piece in there, so he didn't hear remedy. And um, so I don't know how we bifurcate what all of this is other than all right, well, let's call the question. And then, and then, then, huh? Then, yeah, then I, I don't understand what, the, I guess I'm trying to understand what the manager is trying to, you know, when you say you don't have a remedy, what, what remedy are we, I don't understand. I, I thought all of these things that we have each, he stated a motion, I added some to it, you added your part to it, Mr. Burgess. I thought we were putting those safeguards in place as policy makers. So, you know, um, I'm just a little bit confused on the manager's piece in it, and so that's that's that's. I'm not looking for a comment on it. 
Well, I would uh, like to comment, though, because... Let me finish. Let me finish. Don't be so... Uh, Usa moment. So, just trying to make sure that all of the, my colleagues who are in support of the project get what they're looking for. So I'm trying to, in my mind, gather all that we're saying so that we're voting on what we are each saying that we've added into the contract as safeguards and to also uh, um, not cause any more stumbling along the way. Um, because truth of the matter is I do not want to be discussing this next week or next month. Uh, I, am, I am sick and tired of this discussion. So I just want to get this, yeah, <laughs> okay, we I'm to, ready. We need to vote on the amendment first, correct? Yes. Uh, is uh, roll call, Madam Clerk, on the amendment? Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilwoman Wallman? No. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? No. A motion, motion carries. Uh, on the original motion, uh, roll call. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilwoman Wallman? No. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? No. Mayor Porter? No. The motion carries. Okay. Any final comments? Please. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Right. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Give us about five minutes for the regular meeting.